Since the Undine have played their hand in attacking the Janolan Dyson Sphere, there have been numerous assaults on the Solani Sphere too, and a series of objectives and missions are repeated around halting their attempts at controlling the station. One day, while partaking in these operations, under the direction of the Dyson Joint Command, we receive a hail from Admiral Tuvok, informing us that his summit is in the final stages of preparations, and that representatives have begun to arrive. As an integral part of the Undine counteroffensive and present at the discovery of both the Iconia network and the Dyson spheres, we've been asked to attend this monumentous gathering of powers at the turn of the decade. We set a course for the Janolan Gateway and move in to meet the Admiral. expect to be here with Voyager again. It is agreeable. Thank you for agreeing to attend this conference and supporting my position on the Undine. However, reaching a consensus today will be difficult. Many different agendas will be represented here today. I will speak to you in person shortly. Tuvok out. Welcome to the Janola Dyson Sphere. Please beam down to these coordinates. Following our arrival are several more ships from the Romulan Republic. This convention has been built on the cooperation the Dyson Joint Command has established, and its goals are twofold – to ascertain ownership and usage rights of the Janolan Sphere, and to solidify the ending of the Klingon Federation War. Good to see you. I'd say you're right on time, but it looks like everyone else wants to be fashionably late. We're still finishing preparations for the conference, and Admiral Tuvok is already there. The Klingon and Romulan delegates will arrive soon, so... We should head inside as soon as you're ready. I may have overdressed. Captain Sean of the USS Enterprise doesn't seem to be in dress uniform. The tensions have been decreasing with time and the reveal of new technologies, new frontiers, and an increasing suspicion on both the sides of the Federation and the Klingon Defense Force that we are all being manipulated from behind the scenes. So while hostilities between the Federation and Klingons have been becoming more infrequent, there is no actual treaty like the Kitama Accords to officially declare a ceasefire, so it's only been the desire to work with the Romulan Republic that's been keeping the scales balanced and ferocity in check. Thank you for joining us here. We need assistance with preparations for the conference. The Romulan and Klingon delegations are still in private deliberations, but other delegates are arriving. Several preliminary tasks remain before we can begin the presentation. Your support in this matter would be appreciated. We beam in security details to watch over the delegates and ensure there are no disruptions. After assigning an officer to each delegation, we walk the perimeter to make sure there are no disagreements brewing that may derail the talks later on. Unfortunately, amid the numerous Federation diplomats, a Bajoran diplomat's fiery exchange with a certain Cardassian counsellor reaches our ears and we intervene. This Cardassian thug is trying to push Bajor out of this conference. We have as much of a right to be represented here as any other world, more than the Cardassians. They're not even part of the Federation or the Klingon Empire. Which is why they need a delegate here, but what's the basis of this dispute? I simply inquired about the Ambassador's presence at the conference. After all, Bajor is a member of the Federation. Ambassador Sugihara is capable of representing them, along with the Deltans, Andorians, Vulcans, and everyone else, even the Tellarites. Though, I suspect they'd argue that point rather robustly. Councillor Elim Garak has a point. Bajor, as part of the Federation, is already technically represented here in multitudes. The only reason I can speculate that the Federation has also singled them out is in order to capitalise on prior experience. After all, the Bajor Sector houses an inter-quadrant gateway too. They have prior experience in divvying out access. Indeed. One wonders how well that gateway would have fared if Deep Space Nine was of Bajoran manufacture rather than Cardassian. 
The Federation's track record on wormhole security is far from ideal. One only needs to consider the multiple Dominion occupations of the station for proof of that point. Also, a fair point, the man speaks truths. The Federation does have a track record of security issues when it comes to maintaining such an asset as the Bajoran wormhole, but this situation is rather different and concerns more than just Cardassian and Bajoran claims. I feel like the Counselor is probing for weaknesses, trying to test the Federation's resolve in defending its claim of the Janolan Dyson Sphere. The Federation has never made a policy of preventing member worlds from overseeing their own interests in conjunction with Federation efforts. Or is Bajor going to be treated differently than other member worlds? I'm not sure what you meant by that, Miss Mira. But Councillor Garrick is here to represent Cardassian interests at these talks and we cannot afford to shut out powers from these discussions. And your presence here is because the Federation respects the Bajoran experience in similar situations. The other dialogue option is to effectively suggest that we're going to overlook and ignore the Cardassian voice here, which no doubt would not go unnoticed by a shrewd and practiced negotiator like Garrick. Well said. Perhaps there's hope for this conference yet. I'm quite willing to put this disagreement behind us in the interest of the bigger picture. Thank you, Counselor. The preliminary tasks are complete. You should speak with Admiral Tuvok again. The preliminary tasks now complete. We should- hey, who put a PA in my comm badge? We complete our lap of the conference room and notice several more standout figures, including a delegation of Norsicans, several Klingons, likely from various houses, and even a separate Riemann delegate from the Romulan Republic. It seems that just as the Federation has brought several races to capitalise on various opinions, the Romulan Republic and the Klingon Defence Force have done their best to widen their points of view and therefore opportunity. It may complicate things, but it will also ensure that the most opinions are heard. Thank you for your assistance. Please take the opportunity to speak with the various delegates. Having an understanding of the positions of each representative will facilitate more effective negotiations. With security arrangements taken care of, we report to the Admiral who wishes us to fish for each of the main party's stance on topics to be brought forward today. We'll start with Proconsul de Tan of the Republic, chaperoned by the Captain of the Lisette. Thank you for the invitation. Starfleet certainly knows how to organize their meetings on a grand scale. We're known for that. I trust that the Republic will be able to take a leadership role in studying this sphere. The extensive knowledge we've gained from the Solene sphere should give us an advantage here. And after all, the gateway that leads to both of these spheres is in Republic space. He is quick to point out that the Jurette system connecting the Iconian Gateway to the Spheres is in Romulan space, and that's fine, but one of those spheres has long been in Federation space, and that's not the only topic on the agenda. What about the Undine? Yes, the Undine. Very interesting. My security advisors have been looking over the data, and we are all very curious to hear what you and Admiral Tuvok have to say on the matter. Thank you for attending then, so please take your seat, Proconsul. Next, we'll speak to the Federation delegate from the Zindi. It seems that the chief concern of the Federation is the Undine threat. The Zindi are here to support Admiral Tuvok's call for cooperation. We know what tragedies befall a people who are being manipulated by outsiders, as we once were. The Undine's lies and manipulation remind us of the Sphere Builders, whose deceptions led us to make one of the greatest mistakes in our history. There are five races on my world. We all know reaching a consensus can be difficult, but the Zindi are living proof that if we put aside animosity, our differences can make us stronger. The Federation's position is quite clear. We believe the only way to safeguard the future of the Alpha and Beta Quadrants is for all the galactic powers to behave as reasonable entities and work together to oppose those who would threaten our worlds. It doesn't matter if that threat comes from the Undine, the Borg, or the Iconians, 
the response is the same. Ambassador Sugihara also is simply focused on moving past the issue of the sphere ownership and onto larger threats looming on the horizon. He leaves to take his seat, and we make our acknowledgements to Grand Nagus Ron and move on. The final ambassador is Sestas of the Gorn Hegemony, which itself is a protectorate of the Klingon Empire. He is escorted by the esteemed Captain Corrin. I sincerely hope that the Federation is not wasting our time here. If your presentation is to explain the threat posed by the Undine, let me spare you the effort. The Klingon Empire has been aware of this threat for quite some time now. This is unfortunately true. Though the Klingon efforts to unearth the Undine infiltrators were considered to be a witch hunt from Federation analysts. Now the Klingons are seeing this as a validation of their claims and they will seek to use this to lend weight to their position. A sort of, clearly we are the best equipped to handle the situation because we have been tackling it for several years already. This is going to be a tough point to argue against without sounding, well, like idiots for ignoring them. We return to Tuvok. We are almost ready to begin. Will you complete the final preparations for the conference while I speak to Captain Sean? After that, your assistance in encouraging everyone to take their seats would be appreciated. We activate this chamber's presentation mode and then set about informing the diplomats to take their seats. Ah, it seems the time has come at last. Thank you for the reminder. I suppose we can begin. Oh, yes, I will take my seat. That done, I think we should start the presentation. Start for the presentation. God damn it! Control console. Undine represent a clear and present danger to not only the Federation, but also the Klingon Empire and Romulan Republic. The damage done here by a mere handful of ships is clear evidence for the need for cooperation. With respect, Admiral, the Romulan Republic is quite capable of leading exploration and security measures here, just as we have led efforts to secure the Solonet Sphere. My militia. I find it interesting that the Federation suddenly has concerns about the Undine now. Where was the Federation when the Empire discovered Undine infiltrators in the Alpha Quadrant? Nor is the Federation only interested now. The Undine threatens something you want. Given the exceptionally complicated nature of such... Ambassador, given what we now know, that was a mistake. The Empire recognized the Undine threat years ago. We didn't. You admit you are wrong? Damn, Sean. The evidence provided by Admiral Tuvok and his team is sound. Thank you, Captain Sean. However, dwelling on past mistakes will not solve the problems of the present. Our fleet stands ready to protect both spheres from the Undine. The Undine can wait. We have more important business to discuss. Who owns this sphere? I represent a consortium of businessmen on Ferengina. We are prepared to invest significant venture capital into transforming this sphere into a vacation destination to rival Risa. I have a proposal of half a million bars of... What's that? Tuvok to Voyager, report. A, a massive fleet of Undine vessels just appeared from a rift. They're setting a course for the gateway. The Undine? 
What do they want? Unknown. Direct to Lisette. Track their course. Enterprise to Captain Sean. We're receiving a distress signal from Earth's space dock. Sean to Federation fleet. Red alert. Prepare for immediate departure. The Federation is our enemy. But the Undine attack like assassins in the night. We will crush the comic coup. A significant Undine force is headed for the Sol system. We must stop the Undine from breaching Earth's defenses. I am picking up several distress calls from across the system. Curious. There are fewer Undine vessels than we witnessed using the gateway. Any word from Starfleet Command? Negative. The subspace relay booster net. I am reading Undine ships attacking Earth space dock, as well as attacks on the lunar colonies and the orbital habitat on the far side of Earth. I think we're going to have to split up to tackle each one of these fronts. Agreed. Enterprise will clear the area around the lunar colonies. And the Armager will tackle the forces around the space dock. Fine. Jarok and I will clear the far side of the planet. The Odyssey class Enterprise veers away from the main fleet. Enterprise will set course for Luna. The Fortescue and the Lissette will lead the fight on the far side of Earth. Which leaves us and the USS Voyager to try to reach Earth's space dock and free up as many vessels in between as we go. It seems that the Undine have rushed the Gateway, overwhelmed Joint Command and made a beeline for the base of Federation power. However, as many ships as there are here, it's only a fraction of the reported armada. We sail through the wreckage of devastated dry docks and the fractured hulls of Starfleet vessels. The attack is severe, and the Undine are making use of their numbers to hit multiple points, and as Tuvok said, local subspace comms seem to be down, further hampering the defence. This was a planned attack. Which, given the nature of the summit, shouldn't be a surprise. It was hardly a secret that most of the Quadrant's leaders were going to be away from home, with a significant portion of their resources and fleets dedicated to the Genolan and Solonay spheres. In fact, we've been steadily allocating more and more forces to the spheres, with time leaving the core systems slightly more exposed. Sol will not be safe as long as species A472 vessel remain in the system. As we carve away at the outer skirmishers, we free up several more Starfleet vessels. My ship is operational. We will fall in and help you make a drive for the space dock. Earth's space dock is taking severe structural damage. Frankly, we find the home fleet is in complete disarray. Earth has been attacked before throughout history, but seldom has the iconic Earth space dock been a target. Although a heavy Starfleet presence, it is also a commercial and civilian spaceport in the dockyards of Earth, while important assets are supplemented by Utopia Planitia at Mars and many other outer system docks. So while important, there are greater tactical prizes once you gain access to the Sol system than the ESD. What's more, they're also attacking the far side of the planet, yet that's America down there, with Starfleet HQ, the Academy, and similar points of Starfleet power. The United Earth Government is housed in the UK, so could that be the target? This doesn't make much sense, it's, it's just carnage. Such a well-coordinated attack on the Undine's part could have had far greater impact on the Federation than the targets that have been selected. We'll have to worry about motivations later. Many of these starships are wrecked and beyond repair, but they may have survivors. However, we cannot conduct rescue operations in the middle of this battle. The best we can do is send repair teams to functional vessels to get them back into the fight. We are inching ever closer to the ESD and rallying the surviving ships as we go, but every second we spend out here, the space dock is beaten further. If we do not hurry, Earth's space dock may be 
Oh gods, the space docks, life support and reactor have been severed. With the arrival of the Tethys Dreadnought, Captain Corrin and the Bortescu join the battle. The forces on the far side of the planet must have been dealt with by now. We soar above the hulk of the torn home starbase and engage the Undine ships, drawing fire from all quarters. Captain Sean radios in that the lunar base is now secure and he's en route as well. The armager takes a pummeling from all sides, with the shields buckling in the red zone for too long for comfort, so we divert power to evasive manoeuvres and pull away from the smaller Undine vessels to join the attack on the Dreadnought. We're only a handful of ships. Where's the rest of the fleet? There are Undine ships attacking key sites across the quadrant. Our ships are responding to everything they can, but we're stretched thin. When the Undine arrived here, they damaged every ship in the system, hit the orbital platforms, and then most of them just left. Automated defense systems are offline. We're struggling just to keep control of the station. Well, we could fly off and chase down the Undine, but we're needed here. I've received orders from New Romulus. In light of this situation, the Lisette is being recalled to defend the homeworld. I will contact you if there is any change. I can't really blame the Romulans for wanting to secure their own planet. Boarding parties on Earth's space dock should be our main concern. The Undine will be attempting to cripple Starfleet operations, gain valuable data, and capture ranking officers. We cannot afford to allow them to succeed. I am prepared to beam down immediately. Your assistance will greatly improve our chances of success. So, the damage to Earth's space stock is catastrophic, but there are still people alive over there and they need our help. It sounds like the Undine attacked in force and then moved on, like a tidal wave crashing over the shores of our haven. They left destruction, debris, and a smaller force to keep us disorganised. Hitting multiple points across the solar system was to keep us off balance while the bulk of their forces moved on to mimic this chaotic assault elsewhere. This is why there was no focus to their attack, they were just trying to spread us out, keep us from pursuing their main fleet, and now our allies in the Republic have had to pull out to defend their own borders in case the wave reaches their shores. Earth's space dock has sustained severe damage from multiple Undine boarding parties. We must locate Admiral Quinn. The most expedient path to the Admiral's office is through those doors. Our mission objectives are clear. We must ascertain the whereabouts of Admiral Quinn and expel all Undine borders. Teams from other ships, including some Klingon and Romulan vessels, have beamed to lower decks here on the station. While their willingness to assist us is unexpected, their desire to see this enemy stopped is gratifying. The door is jammed, so we clamber over the wreckage to reach the manual release. However, a feeble call for help reaches us over the faint drone of alarms and the groaning of the station. Everything hurts. What? Who? Admiral Tuvok? Rock is a graduate of the Starfleet year of 2409. This has been a rough first year for him. I don't... what? The windows! They came through the windows, walking on the hull! I don't know. After the Klingon and Borg attacks during my cadet cruise, I, I thought working at Earth's space dock would be less traumatic. The 
poor guy seems rather unfocused, though he did reveal how the Undine boarded from simply walking in through the windows. Makes sense, they can survive a vacuum with no ill effects. Indeed. I can initiate a mind meld. It will calm him, and I will be able to learn what he knows about the attack. This is not normally something I would suggest, but I believe that in this instance it is necessary. I'll keep an eye out then, you do your thing. My mind to your mind. My thoughts to your thoughts. As we oversee the process, we're assaulted by the telepathic blasts of several Undine that emerged from the corner of the room. I didn't even see from where they entered. I'm... I, I'm, I'm feeling better now. Thank you. The Undine, yes. They just appeared in close orbit. We were taken by surprise and none of the defense systems worked. I, I, I don't know why. They've, they've been killing people. I don't know what they want, but they've been systematic about their attacks. They want something. Then stick with us and we'll work it out. It sounds like they had an insider. There is more going on with these boarding parties than mere distress. Phaser fire. There are more Starfleet officers fighting nearby. We need to manually activate the fire suppression systems. I thought Earth Space Dock would be a quiet assignment. Oh, this is a quiet assignment. You should see my weekends. Tholians, Gorm, Omega Particles. Be cautious. There are more Undine nearby. After quenching the flames, we proceed away from the shortest route to the Admiral's office in order to help the survivors. Rushing through the steam and smoke, and with main power offline, we see the silhouettes of humanoid figures emerge from the murk and stagger to the floor. Beyond them, the large tripod aliens are slashing away at the survivors. We intervene with our disruptor fire, and they turn on us instead. After calling in reinforcements, we fell the creatures as another, larger one forces its way through the broken door. More emerge from the shadows and surround us, but by focusing our fire on them one at a time, we can reduce their advantage and weather the ambush. Admiral Tuvok, I'm gonna help hold this position. I'm not much of a soldier, but I can make repairs and help keep this area clear of Undine. I hope Admiral Quinn is okay. He was on comms a few minutes ago, but the transmission was cut off. Well, we either lost comms or he has company. We'll find him. Stay safe. Be cautious. There are more Undine nearby. Again, from the gloom where even the emergency lighting has failed, the shapeless forms of Undine could be seen in the flicker of flames and the soft glow of force fields. I'll stay here. Good luck. Scrambling across the ceiling of an intersecting corridor comes another Undine. It drops down and we open fire. And the shot from the Admiral vaporises it. The damage is extensive, but we will rebuild. First, however, we must drive Species A-472 back to fluidic space. Uh, 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 oh no, the poor Andorian's been spaced as well. <clears throat> Admiral Quinn. On opening a sealed door, we spot a wounded Quinn slumped over amid dead Starfleet officers and several Undine. It looks like there was a firefight in here, and then the roof of this room collapsed, ending it. We help the Fleet Admiral to his feet, only to see him morph into a large battle leader and Dean. Several more corpses stand up and it is revealed to be another ambush. As before, we call in reinforcements from the Armager to help neutralise the invaders. And to avoid being flanked, we fall back to the door. The shape-shifting nature of species 8472 makes them a dangerous foe. We will have to proceed with caution to avoid being caught unaware again. Clearly, Admiral Quinn is not here. He may be still alive elsewhere on the station. The logical course of action amid so much chaos will be to re-establish the chain of command. 
Understood. Suggestions, Admiral Tuvok? Perhaps we can establish more reliable communications by directly linking to the Starbase's internal systems. The consoles here can be used for that purpose. Make the attempt. I will keep watch for more Undine. We do a quick perimeter sweep of these supposedly dead bodies, and sure enough uncover another Undine infiltrator. I can only speculate that the Undine left here are trying to avoid detection by sowing chaos then blending in with the survivors to escape and secure a place as an agent within our ranks. By playing dead they're hoping to go unnoticed and be swept up in the rescue operations, only revealing themselves when they're in direct danger of being discovered. We set about trying to reroute internal comms to track down the Admiral. Who is this? My communications are damaged. One moment. This is Admiral Quinn. Actually, one sec. How do we know you're the real Admiral Quinn? I suppose that's a valid question. You reported to me after the attack on Vega Colony. I took a chance on promoting you. I see now it was the right one. Admiral Tuvok, we spoke briefly about your mission right before you reported back to Voyager. You mentioned your wife and said it was fortunate you had time to visit Vulcan to see T'Pel before the conference. As a temporal agent, the backstory Quinn just gave me was a cover story. Admiral, what is your status? I'm pinned down in my office with Egan. We've been trying to get internal comms and sensors working. What's your status? Uh, not good, there are a lot of casualties out here, and restoring order is... not easy. The Undine boarding parties appear to have some goal in mind, but we are unsure as to what it might be. Admiral, I suggest you hold your position. We will make our way to you. Stay alert for more imposters. We move on to the adjoining corridor and manually open the door to witness an officer fall to an Undine overseer. We take it down and rush on into another of Species 8472 standing over two more dead Starbase personnel. The catastrophic structural damage to the ESD has caused numerous hull breaches and much of the station is depressurised and sealed off by force fields. Entering into a collapsed observation deck we see the Undine assaulting more personnel and we step in to intervene with beamed in reinforcements. More enemies drop in from the ceiling, and this must be where they keep coming from. As humans, we seldom think to look up for predators. A crashed bio ship also creates an impasse. The way is blocked. There may be an alternate on the upper deck. Admiral Quinn and Commander Egan are below. The Admiral appears to require medical treatment. From our elevated position, we can rain down explosives and fire on the Undine as they close in on the Admiral's position. But we need to get to him, his aide, Egan, and his small security team. Quinn is a vital source of intelligence for the Undine, with operational knowledge of all of Starfleet's activities. It is agreeable to see you, Admiral. We try to talk to the Admiral, but he's unresponsive. Although out of it, he doesn't seem to be injured. Before we can ascertain his status, more 8472 crawl over the wreckage to attack the makeshift barricade sheltering us. We step out into the front lines to add our fire to the security teams as the Undine press the attack on Quinn's position. It's up to us to fend them off while protecting the rattled Admiral, which is rather strange actually. Quinn is a longtime veteran, and I've never seen him this disorientated. After a second wave of Undine's driven off, Quinn finally speaks up. Thank you. Now maybe we should... Commander Egan! Egg? Where are you going? One moment, Admiral. Intriguing. The amount of resistance Starfleet has offered is... unexpected. That being said, the weak will perish, and you are weak. Again, reveals itself to be another Undine, but when would he have time to be replaced? I, I thought this one hasn't left Quinn's side since before the attack began. 
He is tapping into the bioship's power base. From here, the crashed bioship we skirted around earlier is being used by Egan to protect itself while he channels power from it. Powering up from the energy and calling in reinforcements, the fight resumes from the temporary lull. Egan seems focused on attacking Tuvok, which allows us to flank the creature and hit it from behind. Sorry about the risky grenade, Admiral. I'm sure you'll be fine. The Admiral, sprightly for a Vulcan his age, jumps out of his cornered situation as again falls. Officer Egan, prior to a reworking of the structure of STO, used to play a larger role in the Earth space dock as a liaison for research and development before being reassigned. We may never know when he was replaced or even if he was ever anything but Undine. Uh, Egan was an Undine? That would explain what happened to our defense grid. He would have known they were coming and had ample opportunity to sabotage us. Damn, I didn't see that coming. Hagen. It's hard to believe. He attacked me mentally, let everyone into a trap. I couldn't stop him. We have much to consider. There may be... Tuvok! What's going on? Tuvok! Can you hear me? Tuvok! Tuvok! <laughs> Hello, Tuvok. Egan was too weak. He spent too much time among humans. He served his purpose, and you will be far too late. Too late for what? Your quadrant will fall. The weak will perish. This dimension will be cleansed, purified of infestation. Your efforts are meaningless. I know your thoughts too long. Indeed, Doctor. But I have taken advantage of this connection to look into your mind as well. What? I understand now what your plans are. You will not succeed. You can't stop us! Tuvok! Tuvok! Tuvok? Tuvok? Admiral? Admiral Tuvok! Admiral! Diversion. This was all a diversion. What do you mean? Kronos. Their real target is Kronos. Captain Corrin's still in orbit around ESD. We have to tell her. Come. Kronos may not have much time. The Federation and the Empire have been at war for far too long. Now we must join together for the common good. Agreed. Hail to Armager. One to beam up. So, now the sporadic nature of the attacks makes sense. It was to spread out the fleet, hit multiple points, then retreat, before incurring heavy losses, while leaving behind a small wing of ships and infiltrators to sow as much chaos as possible. Their goal was to simply keep us engaged by hitting sporadic, important targets. ESD. Quinn. They knew they probably wouldn't succeed, but it was all just to keep us licking our wounds, as they interfered with our efforts to restore order. They did a lot of damage, sure, aided by long embedded operatives, but there are greater targets than the ESD they could have hit, and although yes, it is a crucial link for the Federation, if you've reached the station, you've reached much more vital areas too. Then, after the hit, Egan kept Quinn off balance just as Cooper did to Tuvok, preventing the hierarchy from reforming smoothly, again slowing our progress at mobilising. All this was to buy time, and hey, if they managed to kill and impersonate Quinn, Tuvok or Hale along the way, great. If not, then they could use the chaos to try to slip away and continue their work in secret. It didn't matter. What mattered more was that Starfleet was kept off balance as they performed similar acts elsewhere, again leaving behind a token force in their wake as they rushed towards Kronos. Damn, if this was just their distraction, I hate to see what their actual attack looks like. We best make the best possible speed to Kronos. Thank you for watching, and I hope you'll join me next time as we save the Klingons.